we've been in lockdown for just over a year now, and I have seen, as I'm sure you have, quite a few articles or videos or posts reflecting on the last year. And some I haven't engaged with many of them, but uh, quite a few of them are people trying to make sense of what has happened, and that's a very normal and natural reaction to these extraordinary events that we've all experienced over the last year or so. Of course, there, there are quite a few things we can know and understand. We can understand and know that COVID is real and is a threat to quite a few of us. We can know and understand that when we are offered our chance to be vaccinated, that it is wise and sensible to be vaccinated. We can know that the precautions of wearing a mask, of physically distancing from other people, and all those sorts of things, are there for our own good, and also so that we can protect others who may be more vulnerable than us. And there's other things that we can know and understand about this situation. But there's also a lot that we can't know and can't understand. And it's very tempting when we're faced with these unusual situations to try and look for patterns or meanings where they don't exist and impose on events a purpose or a pattern that isn't there. And of course, that's not just true with uh, COVID, but it's true with all sorts of things in the world around us and in our personal lives. Of course, there are some things that we can know and can understand, but there are many, many more things that we can't make sense of and which we can be tempted to impose a pattern or a meaning on to make it a bit easier on us, when in fact that pattern or meaning may not be quite as clear as we may like to think it is. My father was a brilliant mathematician. He was a genius in his field, a leader in his field, a field which most of us have never heard of, and to this day I still don't really understand. But he, he was brilliant, and he was very concerned about not just maths, but science in general, and the link between science and faith, and how the two are not a contradiction. One of the things that I remember him talking about a lot was how science, maths, and all the other sciences could teach us a lot, and it could help us to understand and know many things, but that a, a really good scientist also knows that there's so many more things that we don't know and that we don't understand and that we can't explain. That we hold what we know with appropriate certainty, but also with the humility that there's a lot we can't explain yet. And that there are some things that we might never be able to explain that sometimes we just need to sit with the humble awareness that this might not make sense. We might not know. And sometimes it's okay not to know. Those thoughts were all rattling around in my brain as I was looking at the account of the crucifixion as it is written in Luke chapter 23. And there's quite a few things about it that don't really make sense. I was thinking particularly about how much silence there is from Jesus. I mean, before Pilate, there is silence from Jesus. As the Roman soldiers mock him and spit on him and thrust a crown of thorns onto his head, there is silence. As the crowd cries, crucify, there is silence. What words he 
record are, are recorded for us of Jesus are few and are not directed at those who could alleviate his death sentence, but rather at others, the thieves either side of him, a prayer of forgiveness for the soldiers, a cry of abandonment quoting a psalm, and a final prayer of trust. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It doesn't make sense. If someone is wrongly accused of something, we expect them to cry out. And I'm not saying that if someone is wrongly accused of something, they should be silent. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is Jesus' silence is striking. Maybe a little upsetting. Maybe a little troubling. It would be easy to try and impose a meaning or an explanation on Jesus' silence that might not fit. I think what we can say is that there is a degree of truth in the understanding that Jesus, having prayed in Gethsemane, yet not my will but yours, having presented to God his Father his earnest desire to have this cup from pass from him, but still to trust in God's will, there is a sense in which he knows that whatever is happening is what God is allowing, and he will accept that. That does not mean that we should accept suffering as God's plan. That, that is a different issue, and one we can revisit another time. But this rather is a silence of someone who, who knows that God is at work. But he's not trying to explain it. He's not trying to understand it. He's not trying to preach to the people who are listening. He's simply seeking to be obedient. And this obedience for Jesus here means submission to God. The humble, determined awareness and decision to do whatever God calls him to, and to accept the consequences of that. It doesn't make sense. But so many things don't make sense. If we do not know the Christian story, if we do not know the Christian gospel, then it can seem to make no sense that most Sundays we take a little bit of bread or a wafer and a little sip of wine or grape juice, and that has profound significance for us. To the outsider, that doesn't make sense. But from inside the story, for those who live the story and experience the story and know the story, it's not so much that we can explain in a rational, reasoned way why this is significant, although we can do some of that, but we can't do all of that explanation. We can, in the almost passive acceptance, with this maybe the simple word, amen, receiving that bread and wine, is the silent, humble acceptance that this is what is done for us by God in Jesus. We can explain some of it, but we can never fully understand it. It makes some sense, logically, but from the inside it makes a a deeper sense, a sense at a level that is perhaps more profound than mere provable truths. The situations that we continue to live through with COVID and with so much else, because we mustn't forget that COVID is not the only thing that we are experiencing. A lot of it doesn't make sense. It's too painful, too unpredictable, too seemingly random or uncontrolled to make real sense. But maybe from inside the story, we who know that we receive the bread and the wine. 
we can know that even though we don't understand everything, we are receiving the bread and wine that reminds us of a Jesus who in silence accepted what God was doing. And that allows us to hold things together that might seem contradictory. We can enter into lament and sorrow and sadness and grief, and we can feel and experience those things deeply and profoundly. And it is not wrong for us to do so. And we can also celebrate victories and resurrection on Sunday and other answers to prayer, big and small. At the same time as we mourn and lament, because although it doesn't make rational sense, perhaps, to hold those two things together at the same time, it makes a deeper sense from inside the story. Because most of our life, really, is spent somewhere between Good Friday and Easter Day. Knowing that Sunday is coming, that resurrection, that celebration, that joy is coming, but also knowing that we mourn and grieve and question and wonder. And it's okay to feel both those things. What does that mean for you this Easter weekend? to sit in silence, holding those two together? In what part of your life do you need to hold those realities together? In what part of your relationships can you see one person more tending towards Good Friday because of how life is for them, and another tending more towards Easter Day because that is what life is like for them, and It's okay for both to be together in that. That's the meaning of community. That's the meaning of the Christian family, the church, that we have both around us, and that's okay. So as we move through Good Friday and into Holy Saturday and into Easter Day, let's do so holding these strange contradictions this lack of making sense, let's hold this, not dismissing the contradiction and paradox, but perhaps allowing it to do a deeper work on us who are inside the story, able to hold these things together. Amen.